Theodore J. Flicker. You have to take a step back if you're dealing with Theodore J. Flicker. I never found out what the J was, didn't care. I don't know what the J stands for either. He owned a theater in New York. It was the first truly improvisational theater in New York. He created the hit TV show Barney Miller. Barney, it's your wife. Ask her to call back, will you? And was a Hollywood director. Nobody had done political satire in this country for 30 years. And we were relentless about expressing our opinions. I would suggest that we set fire to his establishment, but unfortunately, the whole district is a fire trap. He's got a suitcase full of pot. Produced edgy Broadway plays. I hope the fuzz don't bust the cat. I'll have the room, please. Did sculptures of nude women. A live model, a live nude model. He had a very, very hard time dealing with the establishment for a long time. A troublemaker. They used to call me the kingmaker. Shortly after I told anybody to go f themselves, they were on the cover of Time magazine and the new head of the studio. People were lining up to insult me. He made a movie that got him into trouble with J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI. You're putting me on. Uh -huh. The President of the United States. The L.A. office of the FBI got a copy of the script. We didn't send it to him. The heavy in the script was the director of the FBI. Hoover was not happy. The shit hit the fan. If it made Mr. Hoover look bad, they would automatically have a reaction that, hey, well, you really don't want to do this, you know, that type of thing. And they would have gone to a lot of lengths to, to, to halt it. It was a very avant-garde film that all came true. Watergate, all that stuff. I say he don't get the job till he improves his morals. I was at a party. Jimmy Coburn was there. And so he came over to me and said, hey, man, you got anything? I said, yeah, I just finished a script. I said, you want to read it? He said, I'll read it tomorrow. Send it over. And I sent it over, and he called me that afternoon. And he said, man, let's do it. James Corbin was a hot star in the 1960s. At that time, he had the power to get a movie made. Paramount Pictures wanted to break away from the traditional Hollywood-style movies. They reached out to young writers and directors who were in tune with the changing times. Al Ashby, Roman Polanski, Haskell Wexler, Francis Ford Coppola, and Theodore J. Flicker all had innovative films green-lighted by the new Paramount. I remember a meeting with, with Ted Flicker in which I said, look, we all know satire doesn't work. When it was released, the film's reviews and box office were good. But a few weeks later, it suddenly disappeared from the theaters. Another complicated security problem. Flickr's film faded into obscurity, and he could not get work. Things got very tough. I lost my house. It's satire. It's a dirty word. That's a four-letter word. Oh, it was my time in Siberia. My agent stopped calling me. If you're a playwright and you want to kill your play, you just say, well, this is a great satire. I picked on the wrong guy by accident, you know? It wasn't so much the loss of income that was killing Ted. It was the loss of the ability to keep on being creative that was really the toughest thing for him. When it's happening, it is very uncomfortable. If you alienate the wrong people, uh, they, they fix it so you don't work. My orders are to kill you. Ted could have created a body of work that would have been absolutely amazing, but he could not suffer fools. And God knows Hollywood was filled with fools. Take that, you hostile son of a... Watch your step. Murder of a Movie has independent film project sponsorship. The IFP is a nonprofit that helps indie filmmakers. Tax deductible donations may be sent to IFP Murder of a Movie, 30 John Street, Brooklyn, 
New York, 11201.